Senator, thanks for the time tonight. Thanks, Brett. A lot of topics to get to. Let's start where we left off there, Cuba, where you see these anti-government protests going. And what do you think is possible next? Well, first of all, Cuba today is basically in a state of martial law. In many of the major cities across the country, uh, troops are stationed, security forces are stationed, and the message is clear. They're also continuing to repress people. We've had these horrifying reports we've seen and have gotten of people being tortured, of, uh, of, of people being abducted from their homes and, and family members not knowing where they are. They try, this is the model they have followed for a long time. The only difference between now and in the past is some of it is being documented and posted on social media for the world to see. Uh, as far as where it goes next, look, something changed on the 11th of July. It's, I don't think it's going to happen from one day to the next. It's the beginning of a process. But what is clear now is that the rupture between the people and the regime is complete and that they've lost their legitimacy to govern. And, and that's the point that needs to continue to be driven home. They no longer, no matter how you feel about them ideologically, they no longer have a legitimacy. And it's time for a change to begin on the island of Cuba. And I think from our end, the most important thing we can do is help provide internet, free, unfettered internet access so the people of Cuba can continue to communicate with the world and with each other. You know, uh, critics, I'm, I'm saying beyond uh, Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and others, say that for more than five decades, every sh sanction the U.S. has imposed on Cuba really has not changed uh, the party down there and uh, the leadership. And there have been sanctions that the critics say have hurt the island overall, but didn't make the change. How do you address that when, when it comes to the embargo, sanctions going forward, and what else we can do? Well, I would say most of the people that give those opinions don't even know what the embargo is or how it works. The only embargo is, there's only two embargoes here, the embargo against uh, government-owned companies and the embargo that the Cuban regime imposes on its own people. Right now, if an independent business operator, if a small farm owner, if a consultant or uh, independent contractor in Cuba wants to do business with Americans, they can. There is no restriction on that. Uh, it's the Cuban regime that doesn't allow it because they do not want Cubans to own a hardware store. They don't want Cubans to be able to grow food on a farm and provide it directly to the market. They don't want independent uh, contractors and consultants to have American clients because they want to control how much money people make every month. It's the leverage they hold over their heads. The people who give these opinions don't know what they're talking about. They don't know what, they don't even, all they know is they're just spewing off a left-wing talking point because if you notice, these are the same people that over and over again, it's always America's fault. No matter what problem there is in the world, America's to blame for it. America's done something wrong. They don't know what, what the heck they're talking about. Yeah, last thing on Cuba, five days ago, uh, you, you were on this channel and you were talking about the possibilities of what may happen there. Here's what you said about other troops possibly going in. Horrifying. This is a bloodbath 90 miles off of our shores. It's destabilizing. And I want to know what Joe Biden's going to do when a thousand special forces from Russia arrive on Cuban territory to help the Cuban regime, because that's what's coming next. That's what's coming next. Do you have any evidence that Russia's on the move there or that that may happen? Well, Russia's already there. I mean, they have, a, they have an intelligence signals intelligence station, so do the Chinese. But it's the model they followed everywhere in the world. And it may not even be directly Russian troops. It may be with these private contractors that are basically Russian troops uh, that they send around the world. But this is what they've done in place after place in Venezuela, in Syria, and other part in, in, in eastern Ukraine. And so there's no doubt in my mind that if the Cuban government re uh, requests it, this, the, the Russians will provide that. You're the top Republican on the Intelligence Committee. We just did this piece about China and the concerns about um, its cyber activities. Should the U.S. retaliate militarily or otherwise to combat ransomware attacks or other attacks from the Chinese? Well, I think we certainly have to have the option to retaliate, to retaliate in kind in a proportional way that sends a message about what our red lines are. I'm not sure yet that there is a clear understanding by even either the Russians or the Chinese about what the American red lines are with regards to, to cyber intrusions. You pointed a moment ago to this Microsoft intrusion and there are others like it. We're entering an era now where you're not gonna be able to attribute it to a nation state even though they're behind it. There is nothing that keeps a nation state, and in fact, they have every incentive, like China or like Russia, to go to criminal networks and say, we want you guys to do this hack. If you do it, of course, we won't arrest you. We'll even let you keep the money you have. But if you get caught, there's not attribution. You can't say it's the government. You could say it's a criminal organization. But here's the bottom line. We are seeing a massive transfer of wealth out of the U.S. economy into the hands of these groups. That furthers the foreign policy objectives of both Russia and China. This needs to be dealt with, and there needs to be clear, it needs to be clear that there are, there are economic costs associated with continuing to allow this to happen. In the case of the Chinese, they are conducting the most extensive espionage operation against the United States 
in, in the history of our country, and it is in every domain, electronic and cyber, but also in our universities, everywhere you can imagine. All they do is scoop up data every day and steal our technology, our intellectual property, and collect on our U.S. government as well. Senator, we're one of the only channels, really, that, that follows the situation along the southern border. Uh, it has not let up. Uh, the illegal immigration continues apace. You made an effort on a comprehensive uh, bill years ago uh, to try to, to pass one. The president talked about a path to citizenship today, possibly using the budget bill uh, to get that through. Take a listen. I want to get your reaction. We need to find pathways to citizenship. The budget bill is an appropriate way to get around the, the filibuster to be able to make a, a judgment as to whether or not they should have a pathway. That's for the par parliamentarian to decide, though, not, not for Joe Biden to decide. I mean, the fact that he's throwing that out there, do you think that's even possible? I'm not sure if it's possible. I think it's a terrible, horrifying idea. Let me tell you why. I think the overwhelming majority of Americans would say, yes, if someone's been here for a long time and they're not criminals, we need to figure out a way to incorporate them into American life legally. But now is the wrong time to do it simply because we have an all-out border crisis today. There are reports now of, you know, state troopers down there facing, you know, uh, these efforts to rush the border and things of this nature. And, and a lot of that is driven by a misunderstanding of what our laws actually are. You know, in the early days of the Biden administration and even during the campaign, his rhetoric sent the message to people in Central America that the laws were changing and they were allowed to come in. The same has been true with things like DACA. It sent the perception, and even when we've done TPS, and I've supported TPSs, but when when you're done TPS, people misunderstand what that means, or they are lied to about what it means. That's what, that's what a, a, a citizenship bill would do. It would create the perception that our laws have become more permissive, and these trafficking networks use that to create disinformation to encourage more people to undertake this very dangerous journey. It would be perhaps one of the worst things they could do right now, given the crisis we're facing on the border.